The Beatles with Taxman going out to Rockin' Bob and Fairlawn. Taxman is track one on the group's classic 1966 album, Revolver. And the man who designed that iconic album cover joins us today. He's also a lifelong friend of all of the Beatles and a musician in his own right as a member of Manfred Mann, along with uh, various other musical projects. And, of course, he's an award-winning artist, having won a Grammy for uh, that iconic uh, Revolver cover. He's a very busy man. So we're so thrilled that uh, Klaus Vorman can spend some time with us today. Thank you. Okay, okay, (laughs) fine. I want to take you back to the very beginning, the very early days of the Beatles in Hamburg, when, when you first met them. They were barely known at all in Liverpool, but they came of age musically in Hamburg. John Lennon once said that the best stuff they ever did was in Hamburg, but sadly it was never recorded. You were there. Is there any truth to John's statement? Well, as a band, they were really incredible. They didn't write any songs in those days. They just played life, and they played every night. And They didn't do uh, concerts. They just played for people to dance. So they they really had their chops down, and they really played really, really good. And those moments were never recorded. Mm. And it it comes down to R&B and and the rock and roll, and uh, that that, uh, was just incredible. Even though I was uh, much into jazz and other things, suddenly I realized this is great. And when I heard the band for the first time, it was just like uh, the doors opened for me for rock and roll. Not really thinking about uh, hit songs or anything. It was just, I love that music. And, and you were coming from the art world, and naturally those two worlds, music and art, collided a few years later when you did the uh, Revolver album cover. But even in those early days, the Beatles had a genuine interest in art, uh, particularly uh, Stuart Sutcliffe. Well, yes, and that's uh, the, the point when I actually came up to John and uh, showed him one of my record cover. There was an immediate interest, and uh, strange because I'm sure that's one of the reasons why they asked me, because I did a cover, and the very first cover I ever did for an actual, actual uh, record was that record, and I showed it to him. And then he sent me to Stuart, and Stuart, uh, he said, Stuart, he is the arty one. So John was actually immediately putting me on to Stuart, and <laughs> from that point on, we were big friends, and I was really, really great. You know, usually when a band makes it big, they kind of drop everybody they knew prior to their you know big success. But the Beatles seem to like to keep a close circle of pre-fame friends around them. Well, I tell you what, I'm sure there's lots of people which they rather say, I don't want to see those guys again. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty certain about that. But with us, it was a, a sort of a growing up time. You see, George was 17, and they lived, they were all alone in poor little Hamburg. There were pimps and, uh, and uh, prostitutes and gangsters and whatnot. Right. <laughs> And it was a hard time for them. They're living in terrible conditions, and they had to play every night um, long, long hours. So they were really pushed hard, and no friends, no family, no nothing. And we really took care of them, in particular George and uh, John. And they all came, I mean, Paul, and everybody came to Astrid Kircher's house, and they had a nice meal, and they could wash because they were living in little, uh, you could say, in uh, cupboards. You know, right. right. <laughs> that was really, really, really awful. So they were happy that they had us, because we took them out to the, the Baltic Sea, and they went for a swim, and we went with them to the cinema. We took them to exhibitions. And so they all, uh, you know, we, we had a great time. So we are the type of friends they like to keep. We're talking with artist and musician Klaus Vorman today on the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop. He'll be appearing at the Fest for Beatles fans next weekend, March 3rd, 4th, and 5th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Hyatt Regency, Jersey City on the Hudson. For more information, the website is thefest.com and the phone number is one 866 the fest now, when you first saw the, the Beatles on stage, is that what inspired you to pick up a, a bass guitar and become a musician yourself? 
It's funny, you know, this, all this rock and roll time was, uh, I was still a graphic designer, and I actually went to London to uh, do commercial art. And then at that one time, when I was in Hamburg, Gibson Kemp, who was a drummer with King Size Taylor on the Dominos, which mm-hmm. is a band that played in the Star Club, and he had a new band called The Eyes, and he asked me if I was going to play bass. And I never played bass before. I mean, I had Stuart Sutcliffe's bass guitar, which I bought for 300 uh, Dodge Mark. And uh, then he suddenly asked me. I had the bass already, but uh, I never played in the band. So a few days later, I packed my stuff. Even uh, though I was working in an agency, I quit the job. I went back to Hamburg, jumped into the cold water and said, I'm going to be in a band. So that's how it happened. I actually played in a band. I was immediately playing the bass. I left that group, which eventually was called Paddy Klaus and Gibson, was a little band, and it just disbanded. We were with Brian Epstein's a lot. Mm-hmm. But that band disbanded. It didn't make any sense. We were only three people. We didn't have a front man. <laughs> it was not, didn't really have a good singer. It was just a great little rocking band for, for doing a few uh, clubs, but, but not to be a famous band. So, so we uh, sort of broke up. And in that, at that particular moment, I got the phone call from John asking me if I would uh, have an idea to do the cover. And, and obviously you did have some ideas for the uh, Revolver album. Uh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, yes, I guess so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when they asked me and I said, have you got an idea? So I got the idea doing the, all that hair and lots of little photos and their faces. Then came the decision, and I said, I want it black and white. They said, yeah, great, sounds good. So they immediately, uh, I had free hand, I could do what I want. We're back with our guest today, Klaus Vorman, and uh, as I mentioned before, you'll be at the Fest for Beatles fans next weekend in Jersey City. Yes, I'm going to come because I have a, a book which uh, tells the story how the revolver cover came to him. You know, it was it's 50 years ago now. I know. And uh, this year, 67, is uh, when I got the Grammy for that cover. I'm very proud of it. Yes. And that's the whole story that's in that book, uh, explaining it, and not only explaining it in words, right. I actually did a graphic novel so that they could see how the studio looks like, how my attic apartment would look like, and they can see how George Martin's office was, and all the people, and, and that uh, was, was great fun doing the book. Yeah, what, what's the name of it again? It's uh, The Birth of an Icon. All right. And you'll be meeting and greeting a bunch of people, too, I would think, uh, multiple generations at this point. Yeah, that's interesting, because I've got lots of stories to tell, because uh, they like to hear what it was like in those days, or they like to hear how I was uh, working with John later, or with George, doing the All Things Must Pass LP. Or what. There's lots of things to talk about, and people have fun when I'm there, so that, that's, a good, that's a good one. I'm wondering, is there any new music from Klaus Vorman these days? No, no, no. Okay. I don't do any music. <laughs> All right, because I know in 2009 yeah. you had the uh, Vorman and Friends. Well, you see, that's not my music, really. It was just like it was my birthday, and my wife told me, and said, why didn't you go and uh, visit some of your friends? And that's how it happened. That uh, then I, I started calling people, and one of the first one was Paul, and he immediately said, "Oh, great idea! Let's do it." And so I waited, and he made his date, and I could go and see him, and and he played the very first song I ever played the bass on. That was even before I even was thinking of being in a band. Was in the top ten in Hamburg, mm. and that first song they just the Stewart gave me the bass and said, "Okay, you play." I mean, it was a club, you see. It was right. not like a show. Or what. He just gave me the bass, and there was about 20 people in the club. So I uh, took the bass, and I played the bass for the very first time in my life. And that first song was a uh, Fetch Domino song. Mm. And uh, Paul immediately knew uh, that which song it was, so we went down and recorded that song. 
and Paul is playing the piano, he's singing, he's playing guitar, <laughs> he even played <laughs> drums on it, even though Ringo later put the drums on. <laughs> well, he has to do everything, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. Uh, so it sounded like a party that got out of hand. That's good. Um, <laughs> yes, I mean, if you want to have a, have a whole LP, you have to contact lots of people. So all these tracks, which are on the album, have something to do with my, uh, with, uh, my past. Like if it was a song I played on, or if I was on the stage at the Bangladesh concert with uh, with uh, Don, Don Preston, a great, great musician, I love him, and uh, Van Dyke Parks, and all these people, all friends of mine, which I actually worked with or was in the studio with. And that's, that's the whole concept of the LP. So there's no song, apart from one song, which is... Uh, uh, which is written by me, and all the other ones are songs of George Harrison or of John or whatever. Is there a place online where people can catch up with you and what you're doing? Yeah, I've got a website called vorman.com. All right. That's, That's perfect. simple, isn't it? Yeah, I think everybody can remember that. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you again for uh, spending some time with us today. We've been talking to Klaus Vorman. He'll be appearing at the Fest for Beatles fans next weekend, next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, March 3rd, 4th, 5th at the Hyatt Regency in Jersey City. The website is thefest.com. The phone number is one eight six six the fest And uh, Klaus Vorman, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, me.